Hello YouTube, I'm sorry it's, I've been gone for four weeks, and I know this isn't the blind eye tutorial that I teased a month ago, but I just need to get something out, and the blind eye tutorial has been the biggest headache on the planet for the past month. So, I'm going to record this, and hopefully the blind eye tutorial will be up soon. I'm going to have to break that one into parts, so part one should be up soon, hopefully. We'll see. But, to hold you over until then, I am going to show you how to do a little 3D compositing. Because if you know how to do 3D compositing, where you composite a 3D image into real footage, or you can just composite together different layers of 3D renders, that will make you a very valuable visual effects artist. And it takes you from being a good visual effects artist to being a great visual effects artist. Okay, and in our 3D application, um, if you don't know how to do 3D, that's fine. Have your 3D person give you these render passes. They should give them to you anyway. They usually give you all of them. But if it's like your friend who kind of does 3D, make sure that they give you these render passes. Because when you have an object moving quickly like this, you don't usually want to render the motion blur in your host application because that makes your render times go through the roof usually if it's a very complex scene. This scene won't have much of a difference since it's pretty straightforward. It's just an X-Wing flying by. But for more complex scenes it just makes it go crazy. So to fix that and make it go exponentially faster we are going to render out a vector pass. Have him send you a vector pass under the render layers tab. In Blender you can do this in any 3D application. And then we're going to change the output from a PNG sequence to an open EXR multi-layer sequence. And this will render out a bunch of images as your video. I'm going to change float to full for color depth. And then I'm going to choose a file to save it to. I've rendered this out already for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to save it there, and then you just hit render animation, and then you wait. I'll be back after it renders, and I'll show you what to do in Fusion from there. Okay, now that we're in Fusion, we're going to find the file where we rendered out our EXR sequence. Do not render that to the desktop. Do not render an image sequence to the desktop ever. That is bad. <laughs> It will be a mess. Then you're going to put that on the desktop, or on the desktop, um, in Fusion. I'm going to view it over here. And then let's watch it back. It looks like crap. Look at that. And you may be asking, why does it look like crap? Uh, and the answer to that is, I don't know. But it's easy to fix. Just add in a color corrector node and double the gamma. Also view the color corrector node. And there, it's back to normal. Why is the gamma half of what it should be? I don't know. It's, it's not hard to fix, though, so that's good. And now that we have this, we're going to add our motion blur. But before we do that, we're going to have to select our X-Wing file input. We're going to go to Format, drop down the Channels menu, find the X and Y Velocity tabs, and select from the drop-down Render layer vector X for the X, and render layer vector Y for the Y. And then we're going to add in a vector motion blur node. With the image input being connected to our color corrector, and the, uh, what's it called, the vector data input connected to our file input node. There we go. Organize that a bit better. And what happened? Oh, it's vector distort. Whoops. Vector motion blur. Then connect it up. Make sure it's vector motion blur, not vector distort. That one doesn't work. And there you go. You have your motion blur done in Fusion. And another upside to doing your motion blur in post is that if you decide you want a longer shutter, you can just change this value and the motion blur gets bigger. Or if you decide you want less motion blur, you're going to have a higher shutter speed simulated, you can just half it, just like that. 
and it makes it really easy to fine tune and adjust before you put it into your footage. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this short tutorial. I'm sorry the blind eye tutorial isn't up yet. I'll get it out as soon as I can, but life has just been crazy recently. So, I'll see you guys next time. Also, quick update, just remember this. I got some new video lights. So I might be on camera later because now you can see me on my camera when I record indoors. And it's awesome. So, I might see you guys. And you might see me, but the actual me and not just the screen recording. Anyway, bye.